Hey, hello, hello, happy Friday. It is our little live time here in the For the Love of Dragons group. My name is Araya, Araya Anra, and um, I am a psychic medium, energy healer, life coach, and uh, happen to work with dragons quite often and uh, help people connect with their dragons. So I do such things as dragon readings, I'm doing a Dragon Within book club, because 10 years ago, I wrote a little book called The Dragon Within, and this is essentially a guidebook to work with them. And this is for working with elemental dragons, intergalactic, interdimensionals, and um, hi Melody, good to see you, you little dragon lady. Um, so today, focusing in, uh, I put it out to the group this week and got a couple of great questions back that I wanna focus on today. Hi Katie. So um, just bringing it in, first question, I hope Christiana, who asked this, she's up in Canada, um, and I hope she tunes in here. I know she'll get the replay regardless, but um, she asked about when you call in a dragon, if a animal, whether it's a cobra or a horse or a bear, if some kind of power animal um, shows up at the same time. Hi Marie, hello from Canada, fabulous. We got another Canadian. Um, we actually have two Canadians already in the book club, so um, got a strong representation there happening. Um, anyway, if you call in and another animal spirit comes, did you do it wrong? Is that possible? Did any of the, work in, any of the dragons work with other animals? And what I would say is, you know, when it comes to spirit, you can't really do anything wrong. Some things might make uh, energy fields more potent or more effective. But um, if an animal shows up, I would say that that's really a sign for you individually, that that animal spirit is working in conjunction with your guides, because you do have guides, you have angelic guides, everybody um, that is really associated with the dragons has a dragon guide, and anybody really closely associated with nature might also have a totem animal or a animal kingdom guide, right? So, um, and some have fairy realm guides that are really connected to the Devic kingdoms. So I would just work on um, communicating and see what they're working in tandem. You might look up what hi Brigitte, what um, that f animal's focus is, because typically the animal, uh, I know there's a lot of information out there about what signs, what they're relevant to. What are they bringing you? What characteristics and strengths are they trying to help you build or forge in yourself? And so if that's showing up with your dragon, they're working in tandem or both presenting themselves probably over one issue and trying to help you really see it. And um, I do know too that there is, uh, for those that are associated with water dragons specifically, there is some higher active work you can do with the silver um, dragon because they're in the same lineage through um, the love line, I guess you'd call it, because there's the lineages with love, wisdom, and power that each goes through the different systems, whether it's Orion, um, the Syrian dragons, the Pleiades, they're all in alignment. And so the water dragon and the silver dragon work together. Um, and they actually can help us when we pull them in together on healing the collective heart of humanity, but also the um, collective for the animal kingdoms, for the nature kingdoms. So that could also be a sign that if your dragon is coming in, especially if it's a water dragon, that you are to do some healing work um, with and for the nature kingdom collectives. So um, that was a fabulous question. I hope that answered it. If not, please feel free to comment and uh, bring it back. Anybody else that has some comments, feel free. But next I'm gonna dive into, um, and we're not gonna be on super long today. I know it's Friday and everybody's got lots of fun stuff going on. But another great question was just about wanting to understand the history um, of the, the matrix grids, the energy grids, how that's in line with the planet, what the dragons have to do with that. Hi, Tina. And so I just wanted to recap that. I know I've talked about it before, but we can go you know, a little broader. Um, and I know the book club's probably gonna dive into this quite a bit more. But um, in the beginning, you know, if you imagine that there's all these universes and all these uh, different systems, right? And we happen to be in this planetary system with um, our great central sun. Well, beyond that, there's actually a greater central sun which is sort of the core of the larger sphere where there's all these planetary systems around it, right? Different universes, different galaxies. And um, excuse me if I use the wrong scientific term somewhere for galaxy or multiverse or universe because you know, the science part is in my field. I, hey, there's Christiana. 
Um, yeah, you'll need to re-listen because I just answered your question. <laughs> um, anyway, with all these different things, when you're getting information from the dragons, that's considered using your mediumship, being a channel and connecting one-on-one. -on -one. So I bring through some information that, yes, I have the, techno the terminology, I've got those words in my brain, and sometimes I just have to share the information and I don't have all the links or pieces or have a greater grasp of certain aspects, especially if they're out of my realm, like very scientific stuff. But I do have experiences in being with the dragons where you're out in that Mesozoic soup, I would call it, where it's like you're in the center of a vacuum or a black hole where there's absolutely nothing. And it's the um, absence of form before creation. It's that drawing board. It's that blank drawing board that God has. Mother, Father, God has this empty canvas. And Marie says, I felt like I was the mother of the small female crystal white dragon that appeared to me a few days ago. Um, yeah, could be very possible. I know, Marie, that other people have similar uh, experiences. But um, right now I'm going to try and stay on track with the, with the matrices and the universal grids. Um, so in that, before form can come into being, before actual elemental 3D form, there's an energetic matrix that gets set up. So there's almost like you would call substance before the form. And um, in that, sound is actually used to create as well. So in that space, if you imagine like um, grid points on a, ma on a large graph paper and there's all these little grid points, well those energetic grid points need to be in place to actually hold the form once it comes into being. And so without any form out in our atmosphere, you know, the larger atmosphere, there is still pressure, there's still um, something there that is creating this space and the pull between you know, gravita gravity and all the other planets and so there's something out there, it's not a vacuum. So there's actually the dragons who had agreed when Mother, Father, God created this. And this is as far as I believe and know in my experience um, and the information that's been shared with me. A lot of people can argue and debate it with me, but take it for what it is. And you know, any time you get information from any teachings, hold it in your heart, feel if it resonates or not. And what doesn't resonate for now, check it. It might come in later, it might get clarified later, and then you go, aha. There it is. Hi, Rosa. Um, so anyways, I understand it. There's all these um, matrix points and the dragons were the ones that came from a faraway realm, from faraway universe, and agreed to be the ones who would help create this sort of experiment with Earth and humanity and, and all of our planets in alignment and a being that would be 3D in very solid form and have emotions and all these experiences and need a counterpart to reproduce and all the different things about humanity. So in order to do that, a planet needed to be formed and a star system and a sun and all these things. So the dragons were the ones that agreed and helped create and come in and hold that space. So essentially for all these aliens, they've been holding space. And with um, the planet, there is a, a myth or legend out there. I haven't really delved into it too much, but it does involve Tiamat, Tiamat and Marduk. And it's where there was this great explosion and a piece of um, a larger planetary body, which I believe might have been the moon, I can't remember, because it's way back in time when I got that information, um, uh, broke off, and that that was, either became our moon or our Earth. See, it's been so long since I've dealt with that. Um, anyway, with the creation of the actual planet coming into form, starting around the core, there's this consciousness. Every being has a consciousness, and so the consciousness of Gaia was created. And to hold Gaia in place, Tiamat, the mother matriarch dragon, who is gigantic, held her form around her as a protector until she was ready to be actually fully birthed and come into her full being and her light body as humanity was ready and ascends into a different place and a different experience. So um, from my understanding, there we go, we have Tiamat around her. There are actually two other dragon spirits that um, are with the Tiamat energetic trine because in any creation there is, um, before the elementals, which are four, there's this trine energy that comes into being and pulls everything together. So the dragons are the ones holding the trine of the planet in the, in the grid. And then all of our information and energy lines are coming through from the greater central sun. And so they first pass through um, all of the star systems. And so there is actually in the book, there's a grid of this that um, was created quite a while back. And it goes through from um, 
the core of the earth, the middle earth, the dragons, the actual earth, the Orion, Syrian, Pleiadian, Arcturian dragons, and then through the planet Nibiru, which um, some people know about. It's considered the 10th planet in our system that there's not too much information about it. It's, it's energetically not like physically there anymore. Um, and then I believe it's just in a dimensional space that we can't see or experience. And then Andromeda is the gateway. And so when those come in, those energy vibrations come in very, very high frequency and have to work their way down. So they go through these um, stepping down stations in each of the star systems as they come to us and reach us. And so at each of those places, there are dragons in place in each of those systems that are the guardians of that energy coming to Earth, of um, all that knowledge coming in, and mainly of our light bodies and the crystalline matrices that are going to help us actually move up in vibration. So as we keep um, working towards ascension, enlightenment, becoming uh, a higher frequency ourselves towards a higher state of love, we actually will start meeting those stepping up stations and being able to travel through into different dimensional spaces. And that's what a lot of people are starting to experience now. Um, there's a lot of talk around about fifth dimensional spaces and sixth or seventh and how you move into that and that we have instead of seven chakras actually 13 or more now. Um, so the information is out there, it's being talked about by a lot of different um, sectors of the metaphysical realm or the, the um, new age thought realm or spiritual paths and I believe we're all gonna get clarity and it's all gonna come together divinely perfectly as we keep going, as we keep really assimilating the information and just really working on ourselves, on clearing out the densities within ourselves and moving us higher and higher individually because as we do, we help the collective do so as well. And so um, I hope that sort of helped and made sense. If it didn't, I can certainly address it again, but um, that's my experience and knowledge of a little more of the history and what the, the energy matrix or the grid is. And it's similar to like our human form. When I talked about the crystal, talk about the crystalline grids and how they get anchored and the crystalline light geometries that we're moving into, we've got um, all these points in our being that, you know, if you look at us energetically without the physical form, there is a matrix. And all those points need to be held in place. And they need to be held in place with a light vibration. So if you just expand that to thinking of it in a larger, uh, arena of a universe, then all those energetic points are actually being held in place by what I consider dragon energy. So hope that is interesting or gives you some food for thought for the weekend. Um, it's one of those topics that can go woo right over and really the key is not to understand with the mental, to understand with the heart and um, not get lost in understanding all the mental stuff and having the questions answered because um, what I'm finding on my journey in the past 15 years is as I keep going, if I put the questions in the back of my mind, eventually they get answered. And eventually this heart knowing comes through. And that's really where the key and the core is. And to just continually work on my own individual pieces, my own scars, my own emotional traumas, my own densities, and things that are holding me back from actually being more loving in every moment with everyone I encounter, whether it's my kids, my family, my, uh, friends and acquaintances around, people at schools and whatever. It's all about really moving into being a more loving being and carrying more light. And as I keep working on myself and spending time in these internal spaces and my own ascension process continues to happen, I'm able to bring in higher vibrational information that makes that helps all that make more sense. And sometimes we don't have the capacity with our dense human brain to really go into those spaces because yes, the terminology might be there and some of it's not yet. Um, and some of the information is just coming in in codes so that actually as we have it in the back of our being, it can unlock at the right time. And I do know that, especially as of late, a lot of clients um, that are working with the dragons have been getting extremely high vibrational downloads that uh, are beyond the Arcturians. And that just tells me that humanity is moving into that space where you know, we're getting the next level of informational coding coming in that our brain's not quite ready for yet, but we're working towards that. So, hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Um, I do still have one space for sure, possibly a second. Um, I'm waiting for those folks to lock them in, but if they don't, they're yours to grab for the book club. And that is Tuesday evenings from 5 to 7 Pacific Standard Time all done by recording so that if you need to be late, if you need to miss one, if you need to leave early, uh, you're welcome, Marie. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, Brigitte. Um, 
and Brigitte is saying she can't listen, she's not able to hear it. I'm not sure why Brigitte, but um, try the settings on your own because you're the only one that's coming up with a little video camera on your, on your picture icon and it's somehow affecting because I'm assuming everyone else can hear it. Heart knowing, I have to remind this to my intellectual brain. I know, Christiana. Um, so anyway, there's, like I said, those uh, one or two spots left for the book club. Um, we are 10 days out from getting started. Really excited because the group that has come together is super dynamic. And um, if there are Europeans that want to put a book club together, I'm willing to do it. I've got three on the list already. If we have eight to 10 English speaking Europeans, we will do that. I do have a list as well started for a French speaking group. Um, I'm just not sure I'm ready to tackle that quite, <laughs> but we'll see. My French is good, but it is always a super challenge to try and channel or work with that um, directly, even though I do do sessions in French. So um, if you're curious about sessions with me, you wanna get on a discovery call, I've got time next week for a couple of those to see if we're a good fit energetically to work together. Um, happy to do that. Let me know what you need and how I can be of service to you. So have a great